Hello. So in this video, I'll cover our peer review solution. So we launched this uh, feature a couple of weeks back and we have received really good reviews. Uh, the basic idea here is that uh, in review process, there are part of the process that are really interesting. People enjoy doing uh, the learning experience, getting feedback, but there are some repetitive and boring aspect of the review as well. So as a reviewer, you have to point out similar sort of stylistic issues and things which uh, could be done in the pre-review. -re -pre and as an author, you want that something which writes the pre uh, summary and also that even for a small CLs or PRs, you don't have to write extensive summaries. So we wrote this a feature from this point of view and it has been receiving good feedback. So today I wanted to cover that uh, what are some things that we have seen interesting uh, that uh, PR review has been able to identify. So uh, these are the three examples that I found uh, interesting. So in this one, uh, there was a new uh, embedding model that was introduced and uh, there was a fallback mechanism that was not thought through. Uh, now, this is very subtle in some ways that uh, when you are uh, looking at the code, uh, you have to understand overall what's happening and when the things could fail. And RGI was able to uh, point this out. Um, so this was pointed as something uh, very helpful and uh, and very common uh, and hard for a human reviewer uh, with limited time to figure this out at times. The second one that uh, we found was uh, in our code uh, that we were using asyncio.sleep uh, because uh, this could help us uh, not uh, wait the whole loop on that program. But because we are running through this all the time, uh, it was uh, leading to performance concerns. Um, and that was something that was pointed out by RGI in the review that instead of using uh, the entire uh, dot sleep, what you could do is uh, await it uh, and just uh, do for a really small fraction of time. So that way you are not sort of hammering the API that we were using, uh, but still uh, we are able to uh, put some pause. So this was the second example of interesting uh, uh, thing pointed out by RGI. The third one was uh, that happens quite commonly uh, in Python at least that you have defined variable in local scope and then using it somewhere else. And it's very hard for uh, ID uh, and all to catch, uh, catch it. Uh, and then you see the error and that's when you find it out. But in this case, uh, RGA was able to find out that the one uh, uh, variable that we defined was in the local scope and was being used as a global scope. So this was pretty helpful that helped us catch it beforehand and not sort of push it into production and then go. So these are the examples of the issues that uh, I find helpful and we found helpful in our repositories. But something if jumps to you, uh, reach out to us. If you are using RGI, what are some things that you are liking it?